to draw a flower called a water lily and we'll use oil pastels to fill it in and help make it look really realistic. But first, I wanted to talk to you about what goes into being creative. Every time you make something new, you do the same four steps. The first thing to do is to have your idea. Sometimes you have lots of ideas and you have to choose which one you want to do. The next step is to be prepared. You get all your resources and your materials ready to go. The third step is to get started and work through the whole project. Finally, you're going to finish your project and you're going to think about the learning and your experience as you made it. You do all of these steps every time you make something new and it's good to know because if you get stuck, you'll know what comes next. So let's start today's lesson with step one by looking at some pictures to get some ideas and get inspired. And then we'll do step two of the creative process, which is to make sure we have our supplies ready to go. Water lilies are such beautiful flowers. As you look at these images, think about what color you would like to make yours. Water lilies have roundish petals and heart-shaped leaves, which float on the surface of the water. The leaves and flowers grow from roots in the mud of ponds or slow streams. The famous French painter Monet loved to paint water lilies. In fact, he made over 250 paintings of water lilies. Here's an example of a water lily painted in watercolor. And this is one I did in oil pastel. Notice how I chose an unusual color for the water. As you can see, water lilies can be brilliant yellow, pink, purple, white, even blue. Does this spark an idea for your artwork? For this lesson, you need your black permanent pen. You need some paper that works well for oil pastel some paper towel, and your oil pastel set. One way to decide where to begin when you're drawing a flower is finding a petal that you can see the entire thing, the whole petal, because often the other petals are sort of tucked behind. And remember with drawing, we always draw what's in front first. So when I look at this example, I see one nice big petal right in the middle of the paper. Now let's find that spot on our paper. I'm going to use my finger for planning. I'm going to about, be about halfway up. Now if you want your flower to fit sort of the middle of the paper, that's roughly where you might begin. But you can choose to move yours over or up or down, and your petals might just go right off the paper. So you decide where you want to begin, just somewhere halfway up so you have room to build the rest of the petals. Go ahead and take the cap off your pen, put a little guide dot. Now the petal shape, it starts out pretty flat, and then I'm going to decide how tall to make it to start. If I make it that tall, that will give me room to do the petals on the other side. And I'm going to start up there and I'm going to curve down on both sides. Now all flowers are different, so if yours is rounder at the top or much skinnier, that's great, just go with it. Now we're going to draw two petals tucking out from each side. I'm going to start at the corner of this petal and curve out quite flat and up a little bit. I'm going to move up this petal and curve toward the tip. Same thing on the other side. Flat, curve up, move up the first petal, find the tip of the third petal. Next, I'm going to tuck a couple of petals at a diagonal. When we're overlapping, we start halfway up curve up to the direction we want that petal to point, touch the first petal and curve up. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Touch this petal, curve up towards the diagonal, touch that first petal, find the point. Now yours really does not have to look just like mine. Now, in the middle of the water lily, we're going to draw the pollen. 
and the stamens inside there. And all I'm doing now are drawing skinny, organic rectangles, tucking it behind that first petal that I drew. I'm having them sort of a rectangle shape so that I can color them in later. Next, I'm going to draw two more petals that go out on each side and sort of curve out and up because really what we're building is sort of this cup shape of a flower. So I'm going to touch this first second petal about halfway back and I'm going to curve line out and start to head up. Start at the tip and curve down and stop when I touch the petal. Same thing on the other side, we're starting to curve it up like a cup, so I'm going out and curve up and curve back down and touch. Now as we go, we look for places where more petals might be and we're starting to change the direction so it's at a diagonal and then the petals are going to be start Dean to point up and then at a diagonal again. So I see two more places where I might draw my petals. I'm going to start halfway, curve up and back down. Now it looks like that petal's tucked in between those two. Touch this side petal, curve up and back down. Now the flower might look like there's too many petals up here. But the next step, after we fill out this empty area here, we're going to put some more petals coming out and down this way, and that will help balance it out. Now I'm gonna go back to the middle, and I'm going to put one petal right in the middle, right above that first one, and then fill in the empty spaces. So look where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna touch this petal. I'm going to, actually, let's decide how tall we wanna make it. I'm gonna make it about that tall. I'm gonna Start up there, curve down and touch, curve down and touch. And now I can put another petal in between. If you have room for more than one, you can. I think I want a petal, the tip of a petal to be here, so I'm gonna just curve down and let it touch, curve down and let it touch. Tip of a petal here, curve down and let it touch, curve down and let it touch. So now for the lower ones, let's build another one coming down this way and then out to the sides to a diagonal that way. So I'm touching the corner of that very first petal and I'm going to imagine how big I want it to be. I'm only, I'm even going to put a guide dot of how far down I want that petal to go. And let's start at the tip. Curve back and touch and curve back and touch. Let's move along the side of this petal here and curve out to a diagonal. Start at the tip and curve back. Same thing on the other side. And that second petal, halfway. Let's figure out where it should go. Curve out and curve back. Now it looks like I have room for one or two more petals right here. I'm gonna decide how far out I wanna make it. I'm gonna curve back and touch the flower, curve back and touch the flower. Same thing on the other side, curve back back. Next, these two petals here on the edges are the petals that start to create a cup shape. So I'm going to draw a curve line down the middle and I'm going to color that part later darker because the parts underneath are going to appear to be darker. And that's just going to help it create the illusion that that flowers starting to curve up. I could even do the same thing on this one a little bit. We'll talk about that more when we're using our oil pastel. Now if yours is smaller or bigger or has more petals or fewer petals, that's just great. All flowers are different. Now since this composition is about really big, bigger than expected, we are going to now draw a lily pad and it's going to go right off the page. So I see I have some room here or some room here all in the corners. What I'm going to do is draw my lily pad on this side and allow it to go right off the page. I'm going to imagine that the top of my lily pad is here and when it runs into the flower I'm going to jump over the flower. 
I'm imagining, I know it's a really big circle. It's gonna go off the page and it might come in back here. And you know what? Little, little like pads often have little split in them. So I'm going to do a little angle line like that, make it look like it's split. I think I might even draw another lily pad over here. So there's my split. And then I'll leave the rest of the space for water. Now's your time to add more things in your background if you want another lily pad, or you could even put a few petals coming into the side as if there were more flowers as well. If there's any lines that you don't like in your picture, keep in mind our um, adding on and our covering up technique because we're gonna be using oil pastels. So if there's a line that you don't like, you can cover it up with your oil pastel. Go ahead and complete your drawing, add anything else that you'd like and then we're going to use oil pastels to make really realistic looking petals. Now that you have the drawing portion of your artwork complete, let's talk about filling it in with oil pastels. First, we're going to look at a few examples to make a decision about what color we want to use. Even though flower petals have lots of different shades of color, each flower has one main or primary color. In this example, the flower is purple, even though there's lots of shades of purple and other colors in the petals. And on this example, the flower you would say is yellow, even though there's lots of other colors. So we're going to choose what the main color is for our flower. And then we'll also choose a lot of other colors to make different shades of that color and also add some interesting mixtures of colors for highlights and shadows. So what I want you to do is look inside your oil pastels and you decide what the main color of your flower is going to be. If it's purple, I want you to find the purple and then find a lighter purple or maybe a pink and a white. If it's yellow, find a yellow and maybe an orange or a darker yellow and a white. So here's what I'm going to do. My primary color is going to be pink and I'm gonna find a lighter pink and a white. The white is going to allow us to get a, a dark, we'll start with our darker shade and then we'll add white to those other shades and it will get the, go from light to dark on our petal. So the first thing I want you to do is take your primary color. If you haven't decided yet, press pause. Now you should have the main color in your hand and we're gonna start with the first petal that we drew. We're going to be holding it like we hold our pencil instead of on its side because we're going to be pressing hard. With petals, we go the direction of the petal. So what I want you to do is start at the bottom and go up and down along the base Instead of coloring side to side, the direction of the petal goes up. So we're gonna go up towards the tip. And look, I'm only going about halfway. Then I'm going to choose another color, maybe this purple for the bottom of it and have it show up a little bit more. And at the tip, I'm gonna save the tip for the white. Now, I can also allow the white to go back into the purple and pink, and what that does is it actually starts blending the colors together. You don't even need to use your finger, although you can. Look how I'm blending it, pushing it out and up in the direction of the color of the petal. So now we're going to go along and do the same thing to our other petals. I'm going to start at the base of the petal now the tip of the petal is going out to the side, so I'm going out to the side with my oil pastel instead of up and down. Then I'm gonna change colors, I'm gonna add some purple in there, a little bit, and then some white. So if you haven't started doing this along with me, if you have, that's great. If you haven't, go ahead and start. Have your main color, Mine's pink. 
start at the base of a petal color part way use another shade of that same color if you're using yellow maybe you have some orange down at the base and then yellow and then white at the tip and you can have the white go over now one thing I want you to do is make sure that your colors don't look striped flower petals blend from a dark medium to a light without it looking striped so you can use your finger to blend this so it gradually changes from light to dark or dark to light depending on how you've layered your color take your time you're going to press hard Leave the white tip and allow the white to go into the other colors and that blends them together. And then you can blend it even more with your finger. If the oil pastel isn't moving around and blending together when you press on it with your finger, it just means that you don't have enough on your paper. So go ahead and add more layers and then keep blending. So, if you're working on your petals, set your colors down for a second. I'm going to talk about the middle of the flower and the lily pads next, okay? So you can choose any color that you want for the middle. I'm gonna choose yellow and I'm going to use the tip. I'm just going to fill it in. I might add some more colors later, okay? And now, Let's talk about the lily pads. You can make yours any color that you want. Often we see them in, in nature being different shades of green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer down, holding it on its side, and layer down a shade of green first. You don't have to do it this way. You can hold it like a pencil and use the tip. It will fill it in more solid like that. Um, it just takes a little longer, which is okay. I'm going to use the side. Go slow around the edges, right off the sides of my page. Okay. And then I'm going to take another shade of green and I'm going to go around the edges around the edge, and I'm just adding more shades of green so that it looks more realistic because things in nature always have more than one shade of color. Now notice I'm using the tip because now this is when I really wanna get rid of all the white of the paper. I use the side of the lighter green just to fill it in, and now I want to get rid of the white and I'm going around pressing hard with a different shade. I'm going to even use a darker green too. I'm going to maybe find the middle. I'm going to use the edge and I'm going to show some veins. I'm going to add more of this green just to fill all the fibers of the paper. Going, working between light greens and dark greens. If you chose a different color for your lily pad, just work between a few different colors. And add pressing harder now to really smooth in, filling up that lily pad with lots of different colors. Now I'm going to speed up the video and I'm going to complete my petals by layering colors. I'll finish the lily pads and do the background color. You can follow along and just watch me as I go or you can watch me complete it to get some ideas and then you can go ahead on your own. At any time, feel free to pause 
to catch up or take a break, whatever you need. The main thing to remember with oil pastels is pressing hard with lots of layers takes a lot of energy. So whenever you get tired, please take a break so that you don't rush through your picture. enjoy finishing your picture with oil pastels. Make sure to take a break if you need it and come back when you're ready. Thanks for drawing with me. Great job working through the whole creative process. First we got our ideas and inspiration by looking at pictures. Then we got prepared with our supplies. Next we got started, we worked through the project and made changes as we went along. And lastly, it's time to finish your picture and make sure to do art talks so you can think about and share your art learning. Mm -hmm.